Hey guys, welcome back. Alright, for this episode, we're going to turn in these little 453S packs into 4S packs. As you can see, they're pretty small themselves, you know. This can go with any type of battery. Uh, say you have larger or smaller ones, it's just, you know, just a bigger packet. But the wiring and everything else is the same. Uh, warning, you know, this can be dangerous. You really got to know what you're doing. Overheating cells. Um, puncturing the bags. These are all things that are some real hazards you have to be really careful at doing. Uh, I built some batteries in the past and I have some experience in this so I'm pretty comfortable when it comes down to it. And to get going, first of all we gotta do is take the wrapping out of this and you'll be surprised how much wrapping there is. Uh, you start off just by cutting the shrink wrap on the edge and peeling back the layers. And once you do so you'll see there'll be like a tape layer it's like scotch tape and this is where you have to be really careful uh, not to short these out here these are all the leads from each cell so you have three cells and each cell is going to have a negative and positive and a negative goes to a positive a positive goes to a negative and that's what makes the voltage go up because each one's um, around three point something volts uncharged and then um, charged up they could be higher up obviously they're 4.2 uh, you have to be really careful with just peeling all this stuff back and once you do, it all comes apart except at the tabs. Uh, trying to get it. See these tabs here? You're going to have to heat this up and be really careful not to overheat the pack and split them. Uh, I've found that you need a really good quality high heat heater, I mean soldering iron, to heat this. And um, what I do is usually put it at 800 degrees for like 3-4 seconds and pull them apart real quick. And you'll see when you do, you'll get something like that. This is a pretty typical what you'll see what a cell will look like. I'll try to get that in focus. Um, usually what's going to be, it's going to be obviously a lot larger if it's a bigger cell, but it'll have a balance lead on it and that's we're just going to get rid of that because we have to put new balance leads on the 4S pack and one side's negative, one side's positive. And you'll also get, oh here we go, here's one, here's the one at the end where the negative was connected to. As you see there's the balance lead already connected. I'm going to unsolder this stuff and we'll see, I'll show you how we're going to put this all back together. So, one, one 3S pack is going to give you three cells, right? And so we need 4S packs. So one 3S pack will make us uh, three other 4S packs. So all you do is I took one apart, and then I have uh, three more of these guys to put back together, which is really cool. Um, this should be more than plenty. This is going on... Um, toothpick build that I've been flying with on 3S for, for a week and I just want to try out 4S but I don't want to buy batteries because I have a ton of these lying around so I'm going to try this out, I'm going to change out the tips to XT30s as well and uh, here we go, let's get to the soldering Okay guys, so we have our battery torn apart and the first thing you want to do is heat up the ends and split them apart um, this is probably the toughest part of the whole build is putting a hot iron to this and splitting it. Uh, I can't really do this by holding the camera with one hand. Um, that's something I, I don't recommend cutting them because if you cut them, you'll lose the tab part. And we need the tabs to attach them to each other. So I recommend you just heat it up, pull it apart, uh, go one by one, and it goes pretty quick. Just you gotta get your soldering iron really hot and get on there. I do it at 800 degrees Fahrenheit and then I split them real quick. Um, if you do anything lower, you'll heat up the cell and destroy it. You might overheat it, it might explode in you, so uh, caution, you've been warned. Uh, if you're not experienced, don't do it. You have a cheap soldering iron, don't do this at all. And now you have the three cell, you have your other three cell unwrapped. Uh, first thing to do is recognize how it's built. I'm gonna drop a diagram uh, right here, and then I'll put, I put this up every so often so you guys can take a look. Um, the diagram itself will show you what makes a cell work. It's basically one cell is negative, one cell is positive, goes to the other one. So positive, negative, positive, negative, and one end comes out negative, and the other end comes out positive. Um, also in the diagram you'll see how I hooked up the balance wires. What we're going to have to do is unpin these from here because we're going to add an extra cell, so that's going to add an extra cable to our whole setup here. So you have five versus four, and that's going to be for 4S. So let me show you how do you, first you have to identify which side's negative and which side's positive. That's very simple as long as you have a voltmeter. So you can set your voltmeter to 
DC. So we'll do that, and then we'll we'll put these on a negative. Well, we'll we'll presume we know which side's negative and which one's positive. Actually, I don't even know. So let's just guess. Let's say this is positive, and this is negative. That's what I think. If you look at your voltmeter, I'm off. Look, you see that negative sign? That means the polarity is opposite, and I have them mixed up. So, look. Let's go positive here. And obviously on the voltmeter, positive is going to be your red, and negative is going to be your black. That's how it usually is. So we have those like that. And then if you look at your voltmeter, there's no negative sign. It's just going to get 3.77 volts. That's the voltage that's in this cell. Um, so we know which part's negative. That side's going to be negative. This side's going to be positive. Let's take a marker and mark them so we don't lose track of that. You definitely don't want to screw that one up. Okay, guys. So now that we have identified which part is negative here, and that's a positive with our voltmeter, it's time to connect to our main pack to make the 4S. Now, I know that the fact is that this is positive because we got that positive lead from our 3S pack and our negative lead on this side. But if you don't have these connected, you might want to take a voltmeter, just make sure they're positive and negative on each side. So positive, that means we're going to need the negative of this guy to come up to that guy. And we already have that marked off because we checked them with the voltmeter, and we just have to solder them up like so. Now, you have to be careful. We've got to remove some of these guys. We'll keep the balance lead. We'll remove this. We'll saw this on top. And we'll try very carefully not to arc them. Any arcing, anything like that, connecting or overheating, will cause sparks, and it's pretty dangerous. So let's just get to it. OK, guys. So we'll get ready to solder this together. Um, didn't Did this off camera. I just put high heat tape. I'll put the link down below of what I used. Um, this is high heat tape. They usually use them on batteries and motors and components that get a lot of electricity nearby each other. I think it's extra layer of protection. I'll put it also around this guy once we're finished soldering up. Um, just want to get that cleanly soldered first onto this and then wrap it around and we'll close it up and I'll show you. Okay, so let's get down to soldering. It's going to be a little tricky. Obviously, I'm trying to do this on camera for you guys, so forgive all the fussing and mussing. There we go. Sorry if you can see that. Let me get that in view. So we got that nicely soldered on, and we'll put our balance lead right on top of that. Now, cool thing is we can just double check, make sure it's all connected right. It's pretty easy. So now we should have a 4S pack. Let's take a look what we have. So we have that guy onto this guy. And it looks like we have 15 volts. Yep, yeah, so all right, all right, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna have to add a new balance lead and you can do it a few different ways. You can buy a whole brand new one like I did or you can salvage the tip from another one, like a used pack that's no longer good and then add it to this uh, 3S with a new tip. Uh, what I'm going to do is remove these cables and put them inside the 4S and then add the two, uh, the another cable from here, the extra cable that we're missing from here to there. Uh, we have to pay attention. I'm going to pop up a schematic right here and uh, pay attention to what it says on which cells 1, 2, 3, 4. Because if you get that wrong, it's not going to charge right and you're going to have a lot of issues. And one way of telling is once we get it all wired up, you can put on a lipo checker and it'll show you all four cells. If it says error or it doesn't show anything, that means we did something wrong in wiring this to that. But uh, here's the schematic. Uh, I didn't make the schematic, someone else did, but it's really good and pretty clear in the most part. How it... Okay, so let me show you what I ended up doing. Uh, putting a new balance lead, took the old ones off. And we're just going with the schematic that I showed you before. Here we go again. You can see there's a negative to a positive 
and that's how we're gonna go. It goes one, two, three, four, and then negative side, positive side. Pretty simple, you can Google around if you have different configurations. Uh, it's really up to you. Your imagination and your ability is it's on you, really. So I'm gonna do a strip a little bit of wire. I like to pre-tint. Well, you gotta pre-tint your wire for this type of work. Uh, sorry, try to get inside the viewpoint. Oh. Just put a little flux. Get on there. Boom. Try to position this as best I can for you guys. I apologize. Some things are just not in view. You see there's already a dab of solder from the previous soldering job. We're gonna use that solder to help us get this wire on. Um, I'll be honest, it's extremely hard to get fresh nickel tabs to adhere to this stuff. Um, I just don't know why, to be honest with you, but. Here we go. Let's get take some heat, boom. Oh, that didn't work at all. Actually, what's wrong with my soldering iron? All right, sorry. My soldering iron was actually turned off. So we're gonna heat it up a little bit. Get the top nice and hot, just a few seconds, and then we pop that on top. There we go, and that's all you need. That is nice and buried in there. Should be good to go. Uh, here's the last one. Now, don't pay attention to the color of the wires. This is all incorrect. Uh, this stuff I got from Flea Bay was <laughs> something, something goofy. So you have to double check the tips. This is actually positive, and then it goes one, two, three, four. And then the yellow is going to be on the negative side here. Okay, so we have it all set up, uh, soldered on. And we can double check with our lipo checker if we got this right. So if we plug this into the negative port first and go up from there, you should have a reading of four cells. Of course, I'm doing it backwards. Everything's a lot harder when you do it backwards, my friends. All right, here we go. So, yeah, there we go. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, all our cells are there. One, two, three, four, no error. So we're good to go. We're going to wrap it up. And we're going to wrap up some of the heat tape around the top. You can put some foam as well for extra cushion. But this is a, such a small pack. I'm not really worried about crashing and causing a blaze of glory. Uh, but for bigger packs or stuff that get high impact, I do add a little piece of foam. I'll wrap this with the high temperature tape and put some foam. But what I'm going to do with this is probably just heat shrink it or actually just wrap it to keep it light with some uh, high temperature tape. Okay, so our battery's all done. Here's one of the three packs I made. Put an XT30 connector on here. And we also have this 3S pack from Race Day Quads, which is really good. It's uh, 450 milliamps, so it's the same as this guy, but in 3S. So 3S, oh wait, that's zero note, yep. 3S, we have 45 grams. Our homemade 4S, so 57 grams. Well, not that much more. Oh, that's pretty good, 12 grams, we added 12 grams. Now this pack has, <laughs> I put no padding up here. You can um, tell that most packs you get, you're gonna have some type of padding to take impact. So it's a little bit different. I also, you know, routed some of my wires a different way to make it a little bit lighter, but um, in a sense of making them a little bit shorter here and there. Uh, but you know, it's it's something that I'm okay to sacrifice. If these get banged up and damaged up here, I'll throw them away. I mean, they're just leftovers anyways. But you know, for 12 grams of weight and you have 4S, it's gonna be a lot of fun on the whoops. All right, take care.